Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and my channel members over at our sister channel, History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains with steadfast and earnest constant scientific analysis and updates because we are once again looking at five pieces of old school paleo artwork and you know this is a vast vast cesspool of the way we thought prehistoric creatures used to look and like i said last time i don't want to come down to the artists too hard because they were going off of what we knew back then or rather i should say what we didn't know back then. But here's five more hilarious pieces of old school paleo artwork. Oh, starting off with a doozy, aren't we? Okay, alright, this is uh, supposed to be a labyrinthodon salamandroids. The problem with that is that labyrinthodonts as a thing aren't really considered a thing anymore. It's an informal grouping of extinct predatory amphibians. They aren't dinosaurs, and they aren't lizards, and they aren't even really a thing because Labyrinthodontia doesn't actually form a monophyletic group. And most modern researchers have completely abandoned using it at all because it doesn't really refer to any one thing. Species that used to be classed under it have been shuffled around to more specific and more scientific groupings, like Batrachomorpha. Creatures like this, like Branchiosaurus, are, as I said, amphibians, and pretty much don't look anything like this. They got the four legs right, and the number of toes seems fairly correct. But other than that, the scales on the face and body are completely wrong. They were amphibians, they would not have had scales. And the body shape is so bizarre to me. It's got like this hunchback thing going on, and it seemed like they were going for sort of a frog look, which is weird because of the scales. I mean, is it an amphibian or not? You made a lizard that looks like a frog with a dinosaur face. I have no idea. It's definitely bizarre, and of course, this list only gets more bizarre from here. Oh my goodness, what have you done to this poor sauropod? What is- Oh no, that's not a- That's horrible! Okay, so, I don't know if I have to explain the problem with this, but I will. Let's ignore the obvious issue from the start and just go with the neck. Unless you were something like a Brachiosaur, and this ain't, this is clearly something like an Apatosaurus or Diplodocus, those sauropods would not have arched their necks in this manner. This is a very old school idea that they would have raised their necks this high in an angular fashion. In reality, they probably literally couldn't have done this, and the necks were more elongated held out. Their tails also would not have been dragged at all, they likely would have held them upright to balance out their long necks. These two factors are completely ignoring the elephant in the room, I know. What is going on with the legs? Well, the idea of this particular portrayal was to make them more lizard-like. Their legs are angled like many lizards have them, shifting in a quick, angular way across the ground. But this is in no way how sauropods move, not even close. If the sauropods' legs ever looked like this, they were broken. And this poor animal would be in horrible, horrible pain, waiting for the slow march of death to take him. But it's definitely an interesting piece, and I'll give the artist props for imagination here, I suppose. Speaking of sauropods, this may not look as bad as the other one, and in most ways it isn't. The legs in this particular portrayal appear to be more along the lines of what we would expect. However, one thing truly bothered me about this one, and that's this particular neck. All their necks are pretty wrong, but this one... Wow. Someone has suffered several significant fractures in their vertebrae because sauropods' necks were not nearly this flexible. They would not have been able to snake it around like, well, a snake would. Even this one holding it this far upright and back probably wouldn't have been possible. And these two in the back are a bit more reasonable, but it's this one that really gets me. It's like, why are you even doing that? <laughs> Oh goody, now things are getting great. I'm so excited for this one. I'm not even sure what I'm looking at, but let's go with what I can know. We have a plesiosaur that's on the shore, like a sea turtle, which they couldn't have done, with its neck held upright, which they couldn't have done. We also have some ichthyosaurs here, just uh, hanging out, poking their heads out on the shore to look at 
something. We'll get to that in a second. What I love about this, though, is that this kind of encompasses a lot of issues I have with old paleo art, because apparently they thought that ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs regularly just hung out on shore for reasons that I fail to understand. Why would they ever do this? I mean, they probably would have surfaced occasionally for air, but why would they come so close to shore? They're fish eaters. They have no reason here. This literally does nothing but put them at risk for being eaten by a predator. Speaking of predators, what in the world is that even supposed to be? It's got the squiggly tail like a dragon. In fact, pretty much all of it speaks of a mythical creature. The artist was definitely going for that mythical dragon look with this one. And I'm not entirely 100% what this was supposed to be, though it may be an original rendition of an iguanodon or perhaps a megalosaurus. Both of which look nothing like this, but that's probably what they were going for. Back here, I, uh... Is that an ichthyosaur or is that a crocodile? It looks like it has regular feet. So I'm gonna go with crocodile and that would make it a little more accurate, but it's got the ichthyosaurs right there and an ichthyosaur head going on, so I'm not even sure. We, we got some pterosaurs in the background because of course we do. Man, this is, this is peak, peak old school paleo art. I love it. Oh, Iguanodon. You poor soul. Along with the Megalosaurus, the Iguanodon was one of the first discovered, and scientifically described, dinosaurs. And boy howdy did they get it so wrong. And believe it or not, as wrong as this is, this is actually a lot more on track compared to the way they originally thought it looked. But we're gonna start with this. This artist has taken the name Iguanodon just a little too literally, as beyond the spike thumbs, which is actually correct, that's totally right, they were given a perpetual spiked thumbs up, it walks with that similar tripod stance with the low tails, and the face just looks like a big iguana. It is almost literally an iguana running on two legs. And that's, uh, not how they looked. No, 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 no. But like I said, this is better than the way they originally thought they looked. Because at one point, they thought they looked like this. And this with their thumb spikes attached to their nose. And I want to stress at this time that this is in no way how iguanodons look at all, and really goes to show how much we just didn't understand about how bones went together and how animals would have functioned. You've come a long way, iguanodon. It's nice to see you looking, well, correct now. Until next time, this is Darkness, the video all of Fond, farewell.